more than once I have been asked if I believe God calls ladies to preach. And without hesitation, I can give the affirmative. I can respond, yes, indeed, God still calls. He does call ladies to minister his word. I know without a doubt that he spoke to me directly. When I was just 17 years of age, um, the Lord spoke to me one night while I was sleeping. When I awakened that next morning, I knew that I'd been in the presence of the Lord that night and that during that time with him, he had spoken to me and let me know that I was to minister his word the rest of my life. My life had revolved around church. Um, all I knew was going to church, really. I didn't participate in anything at school other than the orchestra. I learned to play a violin, and, and but nothing else seemed to, to attract other than church. I wanted to do something for God. So after I graduated high school, I received my license in the Texas district in my early 20s. I evangelized, I took mission trips, and then one day I married a man called of God. Together we attended Jackson College of Ministries. We became aimers to the Philippines, and then eventually we would pastor, find ourselves pastoring a wonderful church in Pensacola, Florida. Growing up, I heard the ministries of some of the greatest lady preachers ever known in our fellowship. Missionaries, pastors, teachers, all in our fellowship that meant something. They learned something at the feet of Jesus. Sister Sally Morley and her husband, Brother Lewis Morley, dynamic missionaries at a very hard, hard time to South America. They were there in times of crises and their health was not good, but they had given their hearts to being missionaries in South America. Sister Wilma Ruth Nix, a missionary to Africa. Sister Nona Freeman, oh, how we love Nona Freeman and Brother Freeman. Sister Molly Thompson, missionary to South America with her husband. Sister Bobby Wendell, oh, going to Ethiopia and the miracles and the devastations that they experienced while there. I was been so privileged through the years in my life that Sister Wendell has become, has been for years, a mentor of mine. She has taught me so much, not only as what God can do, but how I should uh, respond as a minister of the gospel and how to seek God for certain things. And I owe a lot of who I am today to not only my pastor and his wife, Marvin and Marie Cole, Beaumont, Texas, but also to Bobby Wendell. Then Sister Janet Trout and Sister Loretta Bernard, Brother David Bernard's precious mother who has gone on to the Lord now. But she impacted my life while I was at Jackson College of Ministries to have had her and her husband as teachers there it was just a phenomenal experience. And these are just a few. God has been so good to bless me with the privilege to sit at the feet of some of the greatest missionaries and ministers our organization has ever known. And then I know that scripture says I can preach the gospel. In Joel chapter two, I wanna read you two scriptures that, oh, they challenge us. I mean, we're talking Old Testament scripture that says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. We are still living in that day. Yes, that was Joel how many thousands of years ago, but it still stands true today because the word of God is never null and void. It lives on and it carries on and it comes to us through learning and through the teaching and the preaching of the word. So yes, I can be called of God and I can still preach his message. I am Lois Mitchell. I am from Pensacola, Florida. My husband, Jimmy, pastors Apostolic Life 
United Pentecostal Church. I am privileged to serve the Florida District as its Ladies Ministries President. I've been that for some 11 years now, I think. And then I have been called uh, in 2016 to serve as the first chair of Ladies in Ministries Network. This is a specialty ministry that Brother David Bernard uh, felt led to initiate, and then it has been adopted by the Church Advancement Department. And so I work under them. This ministry is under Church Advancement, but Brother David Bernard is the one who I answer to. And I am appreciative of his leadership and his guidance and how the general board works with him and supports his feelings that ladies need to be trained and we need a connection. So I uh, would like to say that Women in Ministry Network has a mission statement. We also have some criteria that we try to meet. It is significant for each of us that we put this in our lives and let it impact us. During the 2016 General Conference, it was endorsed and recognized. And our mission is to facilitate communication, coordination, visibility, mentoring, and training tools for credentialed women ministers. It is available to you today through Facebook, but we have now in the process of developing a network through uh, media, through, um, you have a website that you can go to and under church advancement, you will find under specialty ministries, as I've said, Women in Ministry Network. We provide that network for the credentialed ladies so that we can connect and develop tools to benefit the training and the mentoring for those ladies of future times to come as well as today. And we want to provide a secure means to offer encouragement, support, and communication regarding uh, whatever pertinent questions or needs you might need answered, or, or you just wanna throw something out there for us to chew around a little bit, as you will, for credentialed ladies. We're in a time, for such a time as this, God has given us the chance to work together that the gospel might go to every nation more greatly than we've gone so far. I believe that God is allowing us today to reunite, to put the women back together and say, let's go forward through the direction and the guidance of the United Pentecostal Church International and see something done. Are you that one who's called to be a Bible college teacher? Are you that one who should be an aimer, maybe a home missionary? When I was preaching revivals, when I was single, one of the churches I went to in my early 20s was in Cahokia, Illinois. And it was in that revival that I met a young, blonde-haired little girl. Uh, her name at that time was, uh, her last name was Ashcraft. First name, Vicki. And Vicki Ashcraft is now Vicki Gonzalez. She and her husband pastor a dynamic work in Chicago. She is on the committee of Women in Ministry Network. She is a chaplain in a prison system. And she is a result of hearing the ministries of not only the men, but also the ladies who have preached in Illinois. And she is a dynamic lady, and I know you'll enjoy what she has to say to you today. Lord bless you. Recording. How do you know that you're called? I remember asking that question. I was 11 years old and we were in revival services with Sister Lois Hornaday and Sister Debbie Ashcraft. I had already received the Holy Ghost and as a young girl, I really looked up to these young women evangelists. I remember the Sunday night, Sister Lois was preaching and God was moving in a powerful way. I went to the altar and the Lord spoke to me and he said, Vicki, I have called you to preach my word. I remember thinking, I don't think that you're talking to me, Lord. I went home that night and I remember asking my dad, 
Dad, how do you know that you're called? And he said, Vicki, pray and seek God and you'll know. I remember the second time that the Lord called me. I was 12 years old and we were having a prayer meeting. And as I was praying, the Lord gave me a vision and I was standing in front of thousands of people. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Vicki, I have called you to preach my word. And I said, Lord, I can't speak. And I remember the Lord touching my mouth and telling me, Vicki, I have given you my words to speak. I remember telling the Lord at that moment, God, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm not capable. I'm unworthy. I can't do this. And it wasn't about being a girl because my family was a family of preachers. My great-grandmother was a preacher, a pastor, started works in St. Louis. My grandfather, a pastor. My dad, a minister and elder in the church. But my feelings of, of being incapable and unacceptable were because unknown to my family, I had been sexually abused by a minister. And because of who he was, I felt that I was not good enough and that God could never use me. And uh, just know that abuse is a silencer. And unfortunately, for many years, I allowed it to silence my voice and to stop me from stepping into my call. Um, so fast forward, I graduated from Christian Life College I met and married my husband, Rick Gonzalez, an awesome man of God. I became a preacher's wife, a mom, a worship leader, a pastor's wife. And then in 1996, the Lord called us to Chicago. And we came as UPCI Metro missionaries to Chicago. In Chicago, we had revival. And with revival comes people and with people come issues. In 2006, the Lord impressed upon me to start a ministry called Hope. And this ministry was for women who had experienced trauma, um, women who had been abused sexually, domestic violence, women that were bound by addictions. And this ministry not only um, helped heal many women in Chicago, but it helped heal me. And I began to step into my ministry slowly. I, I began speaking in different venues, churches, women's shelters. I became a chaplain at Cook County Jail. And even though my husband and my family encouraged me to get my minister's license, uh, I said, no, I don't really need that. And I just did not step into that. In 2009, I received a call from a woman who had just been battered by her husband. And I was on my way to the hospital. Um, I got there, it was after visiting hours, and I tried to go see her and to be with her, but they would not let me go up because I, was, I didn't have any credentials. And that was the tipping point for me. Um, I received my general license in 2011. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, I am in the middle of the ordination process. And you remember that vision that I received at 12? Well, in 2013, my husband and I were asked to preach a general conference for the North American Mission Service. As I ended my message and I, I stepped back from the pulpit, the Lord spoke to me and said, Vicki, do you remember the vision I gave you when you were 12? And I looked over the audience and tears welled up in my eyes. And I realized that I had just preached to thousands of people. If you are watching this video, then I know that you are called. And I'm certain that you either have your credentials or maybe you're wondering why you should get them. How do you know that you're called? Well, for me, it was an intense hunger for God, a desire to do His will. Um, I had a deep sense of urgency 
that I felt when I separated myself in times of consecration to God. And I knew that I was called because um, my pastor, my husband confirmed it, leaders in my life. And why get a minister's license? Well, let me give you two basic reasons. Number one, it gives you credibility and accountability. And number two, having a license with an organization provides you with credentials <clears throat> that will give you a broader um, ability to minister in the secular and public arenas. Every call and every ministry is different and unique. In these past few years, I have seen so many different doors of opportunity open for women in ministry in the UPCI. And I am so grateful for the vision of our superintendent, Dr. David Bernard and our UPCI organization who support women in ministry. And today, I'm so excited to introduce to you Women in Ministry Network. This network is a place where credentialed women can connect with each other and we can be encouraged and empowered and equipped for ministry. As you watch the rest of this video, um, Sister Melissa Frost, my friend, former missionary, and our committee chair, Sister Lois Mitchell, that same Sister Lois that preached when I was 11-year-old girl that received her call, they will discuss how Women in Ministry Network came to be. They will let you know what the mission and the vision is, the objectives of this network and the resources that we have available. You will hear answers to questions like, how do I know that I'm called? Why do I need a license? And what are the benefits of getting a license? What is it like to stand before the board to get the license? And what ministries are being lived out by women in the UPCI? And today I'm so excited that you've joined us and I welcome you to Women in Ministry Network. Thank you, Sister Gonzalez. So in preparing for this video, I've been asked to share some things about my personal call and um, share with you also what the process is to go through licensure um, in the United Pentecostal Church. And I have the privilege of sharing with you some mini biographies of some ladies who are active in ministry around North America and literally around the world. So just to get to know each other a little bit, my name is Melissa Frost and I am on the pastoral staff at the Apostolic Church of Belleville in Belleville, Illinois. Happy and privileged to be part of this vibrant congregation and um, I'm happy to be serving in this capacity. But I haven't always been in this place as you can probably imagine. Um, I, I had to come through the process of recognizing the call of God on my life and understanding its meaning and moving forward with this call that God has placed on me. So thinking about the factors that play into the call of God, you know, obviously it's, it's for some, it's that moment where God speaks to you or moves on you deeply to move in that direction of the call. Um, then you have the, the recognition and approval of the leaders, the spiritual leaders, your pastor, um, the spiritual leaders in your life. And then there's the relationship with God that you continue to maintain and continue to deepen and allow that relationship to grow, but then also that you grow as a result of that relationship deepening. All of these factors are very important. And I, I, I would say that everyone's call or experience could be a little bit different. Um, I think we see different examples in scripture of a call narrative. Um, I think about Moses and his very clear call. There's a burning bush and it's speaking to him about what he wants, what, he, what God wants him to do and how, how he will act as a deliverer for the people of Israel. It's a very clear, very crisp call. Saul, the apostle, uh, soon to be the apostle Paul, 
has this epiphany moment where the light shines so brightly and there's a, a speaking forth um, an invitation to relationship and knowledge of who Jesus is. Very clear encounters with God. But then I also think about, you know, King Saul and King David and how they came into position or role in the kingdom of Israel. They were anointed by the spiritual leader at the time, by Samuel. Um, and then I think about Joseph and Daniel and how there's no recorded call narrative in their stories. There's never a moment in scripture where God says, Joseph, I want you to save my people from famine one day, or Daniel, you're going to be a powerful man in the kingdom of the enemy. They just served in faithful obedience. And that obedience positioned them for God to use them and to call them into ministry. All of these are examples that we can look to as to how a call manifests. Um, for me, I, I've been in some sort of ministry most of my life. My parents were church planters. And so from, they became church planters when I was 13. And so from that point forward, I had all of this opportunity to experience different kinds of ministries, um, but never, not once, in teenage years, in my 20s, did I ever think that God would call me to preach or that he would call me to uh, licensed ministry? 2007, in fact, this is how much I, I did not believe that I would be a preacher or never even thought about it. Um, in 2007, I was at the Illinois District Campgrounds for an ordination service. And I was talking with my pastor and his wife and, and there was some lighthearted joking going on. And then my pastor turns to me and half jokingly says, Melissa, when are you gonna get your license? And I laughed like Sarah, I laughed out loud because I just couldn't see that ever happening. I couldn't see it coming into play in my life at all. So from 2007 and that laughter moment, we fast forward to 2009 and I'm at General Conference and it's Thursday night and my face is buried in the carpet during altar call and I have no idea who was preaching. I don't know what songs we sang, but I knew when I got up from that moment that I needed an application for licensure in the United Pentecostal Church. And I went that night and found my pastor and I, I was talking with him and his wife and, and he just grinned, you know. He had known that this would be what God would ask me to do. I had no idea. I didn't understand at that moment everything that God would have laid out for me in my call or in my ministry. Um, I didn't know that he was going to lead me into being a children's ministries director. I'd been in children's ministry for 20 years um, by the end of, of that term as children's ministry director. Um, and then I, I didn't know that he was gonna call me to be a church planter and a pastor. Um, to be involved in Metro Missions and pastor a church in Quebec City. I had no idea that deputation would take me to 27 states and four Canadian provinces preaching all along the way. I did not imagine in 2009 that that's what God had in store. I didn't know he would bring me home to Belleville once again to be part of the, of the pastoral staff here. So you, don't, you can't imagine sometimes where God's going to take you. But there's something about that call that pushes us, that, that, that encourages us to em embrace it and to pursue it at all costs. I know I'm called, not only because I felt it, but because my spiritual leadership understood it. There was a recognition in my pastor that this was what God was calling me to do. And then there was the approval at the district level. I, I sought licensure with the Illinois district and a group of, of venerable and respected gentlemen in the district board approved this and agreed that God was, was the one at work here in my life. All of that to say, the process for licensure is the same for everybody. We're all gonna do our assigned reading. We're all going to do um, the, the practicum part of preaching or teaching or ministering in a, in, in a Bible study or another setting once a week for at least six months for that, uh, to get ready for that application moment. Um, most districts also have some sort of licensure seminar or something along those lines that's preparatory. The season of preparation before you actually go and meet the board and talk about your burden and your call. 
Um, there's the, the ministry central videos that are part of the training process. And all of this is the same. If you're male or female, no matter what background you come from, it's all the same. However, how we experience it can be different sometimes. Some people are super excited and super pumped and they can't wait to get in there and talk to the board. And other people, I touched the mic, but other people like me, um, I talk with my hands, it's peril of the job. But um, other people like me get intimidated and f fearful and a little bit concerned that, you know, what am I gonna say? What if they ask me a question that I don't know the answer to? And even though I was 31 at the time that I applied for licensure, I was nervous. I, I didn't feel like I had it all together and um, I was grateful to have very sympathetic people on the other end of that conversation in the boardroom. Um, so if you feel nervous or if you feel super excited, don't worry, it's normal. And uh, it's, it's a good thing. On the other side of that conversation, it's a great thing to have. Lastly, I wanna leave you with some testimonies of what women around the United Pentecostal Church are doing for ministry. Um, first, I wanna talk about some evangelists, people who are spending their time in full-time evangelism ministry. Lori Wagner is uh, an excellent speaker. She's an author of 25 books and she travels and, and, and ministers to congregations around the world. She's been an international speaker for some time. Um, Lauren Crutchfield is a children's evangelist and she, um, I'll, I'll tell you a story about a mission field that she visited. Um, this particular location had a long history of missionaries being present from the United Pentecostal Church. They have several churches that are locally run. They have their own separate um, United Pentecostal Church organization in that country. However, there had been a limitation in some people's minds as to whether or not children could be filled with the Holy Ghost. And Lauren was part of a missions group that went to this particular nation. And through her ministry, God filled eight children in that country with the Holy Ghost. And it opened a whole new field of mission of missions work really among the children of that country as, as people accepted, you know what? God does fill children with the Holy Ghost and how, how groundbreaking that was in that particular region. Kara McCoy is another evangelist who's, who's in full-time ministry. She's also uh, a licensed counselor. She's also a public school teacher. She's doing some amazing things. Um, uh, Bethany Mashad is an associate in missions. She's currently serving as an interim pastor while the missionary in that area is home on deputation. She is serving as the interim pastor um, overseas. Vicki Gonzalez is a chaplain in, uh, in the prison system in the Chicagoland area. She serves as a, a chaplain in that area. Um, there are some pastors I wanna tell you about. Jessica Doucette is a pastor and a church planter in Campbellton, New Brunswick. She has been pastoring a French speaking uh, congregation that is a, that's a daughter work of her home church there in Campbellton. She's also the Atlantic District Youth Secretary. There are amazing things happening by women in the United Pentecostal Church and we are so privileged to be in this organization that allows us to serve as God calls.